now in the next question 154 which is based on wave optics and that to Young's double slit experiment it's a very straightforward question it says that in Young's double slit experiment the slits are 2 millimeter apart that is small d value has been given to you and are illuminated by photons of two wavelengths lambda 1 and lambda 2 they have been given that means two different frequencies of light are falling in at what minimum distance distance means x value from the common central bright fringe on the screen 2 meter apart this 2 meter is basically capital D value 2 meter from the slit will be a bright fringe from one interference pattern coincide with a bright fringe from the other now to solve this particular question you simply use the straightforward expression this is the position of nth bright fringe this is n lambda capital D upon small d the simplest straightforward formula you are supposed to use now see here since the position of bright fringe for both the frequency is same so here you are using the expression n1 lambda is equal to n2 lambda 2 to you know get into the number or order of fringe you see one lambda is 12000 another one is 10000 if you sub try to substitute here n1 into 12000 is equal to n2 into 10000 now if you are trying to have the minimum value then you see one will be just higher by value one with respect to other say n1 here is smaller value n2 will be larger value whatever will be the value of n1 plus 1 will be the value of n2 so if you substitute that you get the value of n1 as 5 and n2 as 6 and that will make it 60,000 you understand n1 is equal to 5 and n2 is equal to 6 anything will do so now the total value of n lambda whether it is this side or that side that comes out to be 60,000 angstrom so straight away you substitute here that is 60,000 angstrom that is into 10 power minus 10 you can write capital D value has been given to you that is 2, milli, 2 meter this is the capital value capital D this is 2 meter you are writing divided by the small d that is the slit separation that is given to you 2 mm so this is 2 into 10 power minus 3 meter now if you solve this entire thing entire expression that will give you uh, the value 6 mm that is the you know first answer this is 6 mm you will be getting so most appropriate option here will be the first one that is 6 mm now let us look at next question that is 155 now here this question 155 is a very straightforward question based on Newton's first law you can say here unnecessary details have been given so that you get confused but you see it says that three blocks with masses m, 2m and 3m as it has been shown are connected by strings in the figure after an upward force f is applied you can see here the force f is applied on block m small m the masses move upward at constant speed v you see this word here constant speed v this is the one which is deciding the question you see the entire system is moving with constant velocity and as you have studied in Newton's first law then in case a body is moving with constant velocity that means the net force acting on the body is zero you understand so what is the net force on the block 2m they are demanding so whatever could have been the blocks maybe m or 2m you see the net force acting on any one of them the entire system rather is zero and that is why they are moving with constant velocity so the most appropriate answer for this particular question will be the fourth one that is zero net force acting on the system look at next question that is 156 now the next question which is based on binding energy you can see here it says uh, a certain mass of hydrogen is changed to helium by the process of fusion the mass defect in fusion reaction is so much you see the mass defect has been given to you and they are demanding what is the energy liberated per atomic mass unit or you can say per nucleon here you see if 0.0 2866 atomic mass unit mass defect is there and it also has been given that in each such AMU 931.5 mega electron volt 931 mega electron volt is getting liberated 
but they are demanding per u that is you see in helium in case of helium it's finally 4 nucleons are there so divided by 4 you have to make and that will make it approximately you can say 6.675 mega electron volt and for that matter the most appropriate answer will be the second one which is given here look at next question that is 157 in the next question 157 which is based on sound wave motion and that to open organ pipe you have to find out a statement which is incorrect here out of these four options about an you can say open pipe if we study the vibration of a pipe open at both ends that means it is an open pipe then the following statement is not true now what are the properties of open pipe you see anti nodes are formed at the ends and you see all possible harmonics are possible in the ratio 1 2 3 everything is possible you understand so here it says that uh, odd harmonics of the fundamental frequency will be generated yes this is true you understand odd harmonics will be generated it is not saying only odd harmonics you see they are saying odd harmonics so 1 3 5 all will be generated second option says that all harmonics of the fundamental frequency will be generated this is also true then it says that pressure change will be maximum at both ends now you see at the ends anti nodes are formed which is the true statement and at the anti node pressure change is not maximum the displacement is maximum pressure change is maximum at nodes and nodes are not getting formed at the end so this statement is not correct and for that matter this will be the option you are supposed to mark because they are demanding which is the option which is not true so this is the one appropriate answer for this particular question let us look at next question that is 158 the question 158 which is based on conservation of linear momentum you see an explosion breaks a rock into three parts in a horizontal plane it is a process of explosion whatever was the rock that was initially at rest so you can say initial momentum was zero so the final momentum should also become zero two of them go off at right angles to each other the first part of mass 1 kg you can see here mass 1 kg moves with a speed of 12 meter per second so you can see what is the momentum in this particular direction m into v that is 1 into 12 that is equal to 12 kilogram meter per second and the second part of mass 2 kg moves with 8 meter per second speed so second one is moving in this particular direction that is 2 into 8 that is 16 so these are the you see momentum in two mutually perpendicular direction if you take the Pythagoras of these two that will come out to be in a particular direction and that is 12 square plus 16 square under root that is equal to 20 kilogram meter per second this is the net linear momentum of the two parts which are moving perpendicular to each other now if the third part flies off with 4 meter per second so you have to understand that the third part must have been flying in exactly opposite direction with the same momentum you are expected to find out the mass they are demanding speed is given 4 meter per second and mass so mass is m let us suppose and speed is 4 as it has been given so m into 4 here you see m into 4 that becomes 20 therefore m becomes 20 by 4 that is 5 kg so the most appropriate answer here that will be the first option as it has been shown here look at uh, next question now that is question 159 next question 159 is a very straightforward question based on error analysis here you see a quantity p has been given it says that in an experiment four quantities a b c and d on which you can see a quantity p is dependent are measured with percentage error 1 2 3 4 these are the percentage error of a b c d respectively you have to you know find out the percentage error in p where quantity p is calculated as follows so you see in this kind of questions whatever is the percentage error of p that is basically the power of a multiplied by the percentage error of a percentage error of a has been given to be 1% plus power of b is 2 and the percentage error of b is given to be 2% plus power of c is 1 error is always added c percentage is 3% plus 
power of d is also 1 so 1 into the percentage error of d the entire thing makes it 14 percent so that is the most appropriate answer the option fourth will be the correct answer for this question based on error that was question 159 now look at next question that is 160 in the question 160 which is based on sound wave motion and that too effect of beats you can say a source of unknown frequency gives 4 beats per second when sounded with a source of known frequency 250 hertz in this particular question you see you have been given a source frequency that is known which is 250 hertz and the unknown frequency is basically making 4 beats per second with this particular known source so naturally either 4 more or 4 less in case you reduce 4 hertz from this 250 hertz that makes it 246 hertz so either this can be your answer or 4 more than that that is 254 hertz or this can be your answer now see a question reads the second harmonic of the source of no unknown frequency these are the two unknown frequencies out of which you have to select the answer second harmonic means you have to multiply it by 2 so if you multiply it by 2 what do you get you get you are getting value say 492 hertz isn't it this is 492 hertz and if you are multiplying this by 2 what do you get if you are multiplying this by 2 this is uh, 508 hertz so this is the second harmonic of unknown frequencies gives 5 beats per second now this 492 or 508 this is giving 5 beats per second when sounded with a source of frequency 513 now try to see who will give 5 beats per second with 513 hertz if you see the difference here it is pretty large this is 21 hertz and here if you see the difference this is matching this is the difference 5 hertz that is what they are demanding it is giving uh, 5 beats per second when sounded with 513 so this is the unknown frequency 254 hertz which is satisfying all your conditions so for that matter you see the fourth option will be the most appropriate option for this particular question 160 let us look at next question that is question 161 now the next question 161 which is based on current electricity and very straightforward question completely based on formula found anywhere in your study material it says the internal resistance of a 2.1 volt cell which gives a current of 0.2 ampere through a resistance 10 ohm this resistance 10 ohm is basically an external resistance so uh, you can directly use the formula that current is emf upon external resistance plus the internal resistance of the cell and in this particular question you are uh, supposed to find out the internal resistance of the cell as you can see here you see the internal resistance you are expected to find out the, you have been given the value current as 0.2 ampere this is 0.2 ampere and uh, emf is 2.1 volt and uh, the external resistance has been given to be equal to 10 and this internal resistance is smaller you are supposed to find out you understand this is the kind of question which has been given so if you calculate the value of small r that will come out to be 0.5 ohm directly and the most appropriate option for this particular question will be the first option that is 0.5 ohm now let us look at next question that is 162 now in this uh, next question 162 which is based on the presence of a current carrying loop inside a magnetic field you have to find out which option is correct one it says that a current loop in a magnetic field can be in equilibrium in one orientation can be in equilibrium in two orientations both the equilibrium states are unstable can be in, in equilibrium in two orientations one stable while the other is unstable experiences a torque whether the field is uniform or non-uniform in all orientations you see in this particular question it will be better that you use the expression torque is equal to mu b sin theta you see for equilibrium the torque must be zero 
and torque is 0 for theta is equal to 0 or theta is equal to 180 degree. So, if it is saying that experiences a torque in all orientations, so that has become wrong understand and there are two orientations for which the torque will be 0 and in one case the equilibrium will be stable when theta is 0 in another case when theta is 180 the equilibrium is unstable. So, for that matter the most appropriate answer is can be in equilibrium can be in equilibrium in two orientations one stable while the other is unstable. So, this is the most appropriate answer that is 3 for this particular question. Look at next question that is question 163. In the next question which is based on matter waves and you can say dual nature of radiation and matter, you have to compare the wavelength of electron and wavelength of photon. Here it says that wavelength lambda e for an electron and lambda p of a photon, see photon of same energy, both of them possess same energy e. So, then you have to compare which of the following relations is true. Now, if you talk about the wavelength of photon lambda p, then you see energy how it is related to that lambda photon you can say e is equal to h c by lambda. So, lambda is h c by e you can say you understand and if you talk about the wavelength of electron then you have to apply the de Broglie equation that is h upon under root 2 m e. Now, if you substitute this expression of E from this place to this place, you will find that ultimately it is lambda E which is becoming proportional to square root of lambda of photon because you see here it is a square root of E, square root of E that means 1 upon square root of lambda P and for that matter you will find if you square both sides then the most appropriate answer comes out to be the fourth one as it has been given here. So, that was question 163. Now, let us look at next question that is 164. 